Hello and a very warm welcome to Revelation TV and episode one in our series featuring CAP, Christians Against Poverty. CAP have been helping thousands to become debt free and deal with other financial challenges for over 25 years. And today it's a joy to have in our studio the Reverend Lynn Weston, Director of Church Partnerships and Peter Snell, Money Coaching Lead, who will be sharing with us the benefits of budgeting. So thank you both so much for, for being here with us today. If I could come to you first of all, Peter, and ask about something, if I'm honest, I've struggled with over the years, which is budgeting. Can you demystify it for our viewers and tell us what it is? Well, you're certainly not the only one. Budgeting can be a really challenging topic, but quite simply, it's just the process of figuring out, well, how much money have you got? And what do you want to do with it? Um, you know, it really is in some ways as simple as that, but of course, easier said than done. Um, now, with budgeting, there's all kinds of barriers that people face. You can have different income levels, you can have different uh, obstacles that you're facing. But something I hear all the time, which in the nicest way, can I just say, maybe misses the point a little bit, is people that say, well, I'm not sure I want to budget because it's going to restrict me and I quite like my freedom. And I really understand that, I do, and I can understand where it's coming from. But of course, the reality is, let me tell you, budgets don't restrict you. What restricts you is your income, mm. right? All of us only have so much money and we've got to decide what we do with it. And my passion is people get to spend the money on the things that really matter to them. So I was coaching a guy last year who was trying to work out his budget. So he worked out his bills, he worked out what he'd got coming in, he was looking at his data expense, he got onto food. So he did shopping and he was like, right, takeaways. I have about oh, two or three of them a week and he added it up and he did it by week and then he looked at the month and he realized it was 200 pound a month. And he was shocked. Yeah. He had no idea that he was spending that much. But the tragedy was that he didn't realize he was doing it and actually it wasn't his priority. So instantly he was like, I want to halve that. I want to spend a hundred pound a month. And suddenly he had this money that he could use elsewhere in his budget. And great budgeting is really just lining up how you use your money with your actual priorities in life so you can make the most of what you've got. Yeah, I was going to ask, is there anything else that you could give us a tip on? Yeah, well, I think the crucial thing with budgeting is you just want to start with a really honest appraisal of where you're at. Don't try and fix all the way to go up. Where am I at right now? Mm. And so get your bank statements out, get a tool in front of you. Some people like to use pen and paper. Personally, I'm a fan of digital because it's just a bit easier to edit and keep up to date. So we do some money coaching. Anyone that attends a CAP money coaching sessions, they'll get access to an exclusive online tool. Uh, but Money Helper, if not, has a great digital tool you can use. So figure out how you're going to do it sit down and so firstly get your income down on paper figure out what you've got coming in and then look at your expenses and obviously your bank statement is your friend here looking at what's going out on your card if there's anything you spend on cash but as well as that you want to try and think your way through a year as much as you can because there's those big occasions that come mm. up uh, Christmas family occasions um, car insurance MOTs whatever things that are often annual think your way through a year and try and get all of that down and it might shock you, and this is where some people just want to run and hide and say, no, that's the, life is expensive, there's too much. But the reality is, putting it down on paper makes no difference. You still have to pay for it, whether you admit you've got to pay for it or not. And so just getting it down is crucial. And then it's a question, just look at it and asking yourself a couple of questions. Number one, does it balance? Because obviously, ultimately, you really need your budget to, to balance over the course of the year and have your income and your expenditure max. But more than that, ask yourself, does where my money's going reflect my priorities mm -hmm. and is there anything that I want to do differently so that my money whether that's spending giving uh, saving whatever that is to better reflect the priorities that I have in life thank you thank you uh, I'm getting better at it I have to say um, we've got a clip haven't we now that may be a real help to our viewers it's a money coaching clip so we're going to go over to that right now I'm Hosanna and I'm Barry <laughs> And at home, we have a one and a half year old daughter. We don't have a lot of income. And so whenever we get money, there are loads of things that need to be bought. I'm Dan. I'm Chloe. I currently work as a barista uh, part-time while going to uni full-time. I'm a support worker. We definitely live paycheck to paycheck at the moment. That's not where we would like to be. 
My name's Sarah Jane. I am a part-time model, a part-time content creator. I can come home with a very large paycheck. Sometimes I might actually have to get government help. I'm Esther. I live in West Yorkshire with three of my daughters. I'm a full-time student and I work part-time. It's a struggle. Mommy, I want this and why can't I have it? Because I'm not a spender. I'm a saver. I'm saving for your future. My name is Bart. Uh, I'm from Cardiff. I was bereaved about three years ago, but I recently remarried last year. So there's been quite a lot of changes in my life recently. My name is Libby and I work at a charity as a marketing coordinator. Yeah, long term goals, I guess, probably would be to get a house. Um, yeah, go big, go big or go home, I guess. My name is Grace. I'm currently uh, doing a mix of employed and self-employed works. I've always had savings and always kind of uh, made sure I'm putting stuff aside, but I think that has changed as like incomes changed. My name's Pete. I took early retirement back in 2017. I think, yes, definitely uh, sticking to a budget and trying to work within a budget is something that I'm looking forward to learning about. Welcome back. Uh, so really there were some great examples there, wasn't there? Some great examples of how circumstances can suddenly and radically change in people's lives. Forced retirement, marriage, breakup, or it could be a, the loss of a job. So these are unique financial circumstances. Lynn, could you share with our viewers the benefits of budgeting in those very difficult times that people face? Yeah, absolutely. They may be difficult times, they may be actually joyful times, but big life-changing moments like getting married or having children or, or then the more difficult things like losing your job. I think that's where it's really, really important to know what your income is and what your outgoings are and keep that on track nearly as a, like a monthly process, what's coming in, what might be changing. And the whole um, benefits to feeling on top of your finances, knowing what's going on. Um, I think it's especially important when there's a few of you, you know, if, if, if it's a, a husband and wife, knowing what each other's spending. Uh, let me tell you about my husband, Phil and I, how, how we do it. Um, he loves spreadsheets, actually. He really does like spreadsheets. And he enjoys um, looking at that. Now, a couple of years ago, we had a major, major life change where he, after many years of employment, decided that he wanted to spend the next 10 years of his life giving back into community and doing volunteer work, which was a massive impact on us. But we got out the spreadsheet, we looked at what our income was, what the significant change to our income was, and then we looked at what are the things that are really, really important to us and what actually are just things we did because we could. Um, one example is, you know, when you see in a spreadsheet how much, you know, hairdressers costs. Um, this is why my hair is long. It was short when we looked at the spreadsheet and I just let it grow. But you look at all the different outgoings you've got and it can be a bit of a surprise. And I think the other big benefit is there's a real sense of well-being you get in actually knowing you're in control. You know what you can afford and you know what you can't afford. You know what's a luxury, you know what's for a special time because it's always good to have time to socialise and go out and be with friends, be with family. But you also know when you need to pull back on that and coming up to Christmas, coming up to special occasions, you know, you actually need to save for that. So knowing what your savings pot is going to be, I think it just generally all around makes you feel much better. So you can keep something in reserve. You need to yeah, absolutely. factor that in yeah. to the equation, do you? Yes, absolutely. And I think it's really important to say, as you look at your income and your essential outgoings, how much of that is actually you can save, mm. and then that expression saving for a rainy day. It's so important to do that and be, to, to keep an eye on that and just putting a little bit away because there's always those unexpected things as well as big life changing moments. There's those unexpected things, you know, when your car suddenly decides, you know, yes. year after year you've been um, being able to get it fixed and then suddenly the horrific one comes in and it's just a massive bill comes in or something just hits you. Maybe the children need something at school. It's just lovely to have a savings pot that you can go to. Great. Peter, this all looks good on paper. It's all good in theory, but how does it actually translate to real life? Life can be really hectic. How can you make this plan, which sounds terrific, a reality? Yeah, well, 
Oh, you've nailed it on the head, I think, because the only budget that really matters is the one you actually live out in real life. It doesn't matter how good the plan is on paper, it's what you do in, in real life that, that counts. And that is where many people kind of fall down. They make a great plan and then, yeah, life happens and, oh man, it, it is tough. Here's a few things that I found really helpful personally and also in, in, in sharing this stuff, in staying on track. Um, one of the big ones is actually having your spending money in a separate pot to, to your bills and your saving. Most people, their, their bills and their spending money come out of the same account. And, and that can work to a point, but it often makes it really hard to figure out how much money you've got left. Can you get to the end of the month? Are you doing okay? And so whether you use a, a prepaid credit card or another current account or something like that, that just helps you split your bills and your spending money out. And, and see what happens when you do that is suddenly you can set yourself a target or even a limit for that spending on the week or the month. Um, and it means that if you run out of that, then you've got to borrow the money from another goal. And it just makes the trade-offs really clear. And so again, it's just that priorities thing. It helps people use their money in a way that lines up with their priorities. So having that, that, that separation between your spending and your bills is, is, is crucial. Um, and the next one I'd really talk about is motivation. Um, so ultimately, you're only gonna stick to a budget if you care about the end result. Um, you know, and that, that could be as simple as just keeping up with your essential bills. For some people, that, that might be where their budget is at and that, that could be a really good goal. Equally, you might have a, another goal that you're saving towards some kind of life goal or whatever. Mm. Uh, having a picture of that on your phone, on your fridge, just somewhere that reminds you, okay, yeah. this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> this is why I'm saying no. I'm saying no to that thing so that I can say yes to something that, that that's mm. actually more important to me. And so that separate part, that motivation. And finally, just, just little and often, I think, Lynn, you described that really well, just trying to keep up to date with things month by month, because it's so much easier to keep a budget on track when it's up to date. When it's a year, two years out of date, it's a much bigger effort to get it going again. All is not lost, it's never too late, but if you can keep it up to date, little and often, um, that really, really helps to actually make it happen. We can be like ostriches, can't we? And, and so easily bury our heads in the sand when it comes to money troubles. Yet communication mm. is vital at times like that. So how do we actually have a healthy conversation about money? Yeah, I th it's so important to recognise that money is, is a deeply emotional topic. You know, it can cause on the negative side stress and anxiety. Equally, it can help us achieve goals. There can be a thrill to spending. We really have to just acknowledge mm. that, that space that, that emotions play in how we manage our, our money. Uh, but as you said, particularly when it's tough, that, that ostriching is very real. At, at CAP, we find often people waiting two years or more if they're in severe debt help. Uh, debt situations, for instance, to access help. Um, and so I think, firstly, just, just being honest with yourself, and a budget is great for that, because even if it's scary, it lays out really clearly that financial position and just allows you to kind of be honest with yourself. Mm. And after that, I'd say, firstly, if you do have finances that are joint, it's so crucial to have that conversation as a couple or as a household about where things are tracking. Uh, because if you're not on the same page about money, it's, it's really hard to, to keep tracking where you want to go. And also, if one of you is making the decisions, the other one isn't involved, it's really healthy to try and make those decisions together. And so having something that you can look at together is, is so crucial if finances are, are joint. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's also knowing that, hey, actually financial difficulties happen to the best of us. You know, life happens, circumstances mm -hmm. change. And I think yeah. people feel all this sometimes sense of embarrassment or shame where there really is just no need. You know, I, I think it's something that maybe is, has started to change in the last few years, but mm. I think we've still got a way to go to just really, I guess, not yeah. judge people on the one hand, but also just accept for ourselves that happens and be willing to, to be open yeah. about that. I'm glad you talked about couples working together because can two walk together unless they're in agreement, Absolutely. as the Bible says, but it causes so many marital and relational difficulties, doesn't it? If yeah. you're, you're not actually on the same page and working together. Mm -hmm. Lynn, as a pastor, I've had ministerial colleagues who've found themselves in tremendous debt. And because of their position, because of their status, they're too ashamed actually to admit it. And it's affected their mental health, it's affected their ministry in quite a, a severe way at times. How do you encourage people, Lynn, to swallow their pride 
because often it is pride, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And actually open up about it. I think it's such an important, it's a really important matter at the moment because there are many ministers and pastors all over this country. We're in the cost of living crisis mm. and they're in the midst of it too. And nobody goes into ministry for high salaries and high income. So we're already living on, on quite, a tight, um, quite a tight budget in their, in their lives anyway. Then the cost of living crisis comes in and fuel bills go up and life goes up and food goes up, everything goes up and they're in a really difficult situation. Mm. Our biggest encouragement is to talk about it and to not feel that there's any stigma attached to this, but that it is part of life. It is part of one of the challenges of life, especially at the moment. This whole, the whole nations of the UK are all really, really being pulled down by the darkness of poverty and challenge. And as pastors, I, I think it's really important that we're able to show our own vulnerability in that. Life yes. is happening to us too. We're not set aside from that, we're, we're in it. Um, mm. I would very much in, encourage pastors and ministers to be preaching on a regular basis about the reality of what's happening in their communities, yes. but to be able to actually acknowledge you're part of that mm. and that's happening to you too. Um, I don't think there needs to be any concern about doing that. That, that, that's, I suppose, the, the public face, and I think that encourages other people then to talk your mm. role modelling to your congregations. That's right. It's actually really helpful to talk, to be able to talk about it and point, it, point people to organisations that can really, really help. But I think then privately, that's where it becomes really important yes. because you are in such a public position all the time to either talk to your partner, to talk to a good friend, because I know many, many pastors are single and they're dealing with a lot of stuff as well as the challenges of money. They're dealing with many, many challenges in their work as they pastor others. So to find a confident that they can talk to, not just about the challenges, but about the practical route forward and actually the prayerful support they need as they, they go in that practical way forward. Mm. But the big, big message is, don't try to deal with this, don't try to hide behind it. There is absolutely no shame in us going through a difficult time financially. And, and also it's a good thing for leaders of churches to sit down during their leadership meetings and actually be real and mm. be frank about the issues perhaps that they're facing so they can pray together, but also reach out to organisations like CAP and get the help that uh, they really do, do need and encouragement and advice. So um, people will need to go to your website, won't they? They, they will indeed. We'd encourage them to come to the website and get in touch with us. I, I had a, a pastor speak to me last week um, in real difficulties. And you know, the reason they're in difficulties is because they've been doing such amazing things, helping others mm. and trying to support their family and just being able to have that one-to-one that -one call that I was part of and to know that on one side, we can actually walk with them and actually take them from this situation into a real practical way forward, but to be able to pray with them mm. as well. And it just really showed a, a real sense of hope forward, but it is happening every day. Don't think you're on your own what if you're privilege. going through it. Yeah. What a privilege. And, you know, I'm just reminded of a friend that we had who was in a, a, a profession um, who really through no fault of her own, got herself into severe debt. And as you say, it took about two years mm. for her to open up. She'd become suicidal. And she had to get to that point before she would actually come to us and tell us what had happened. And then we pointed her towards CAP. Okay. And we had a CAP centre in, in our local vicinity at that time. And it absolutely revolutionised her life. How do you bring hope to people and how can CAP actually help somebody like that? How do they do it? Del, heartbreakingly, one in two, I can't even believe I'm saying these statistics, one in two, 50% of the people who approach CAP are feeling that the only way out of debt and poverty mm. is to end their life. And that, that is what keeps me up at night and that's what gets me up in the morning to do what we are doing. One in two, it's shocking statistics. But this really, we really encourage people to come on this journey with us. You don't have to do this alone. They can walk beside us. We can actually take them through the financial process of helping them get out of debt with 
experts that can really help talk them through every stage. I can't even tell you the weight that that lifts off people when they think, oh my goodness, there's lots of people going through this. Somebody actually knows exactly what I need to do now and what to do next. And, and while somebody's doing that, there's actually somebody in their home with them actually taking them through the process. So the hope we give is the hope in Jesus. Yes. Because when we talk to somebody about debt, we normally find that there's a whole pile of other things going on as well. Um, debt is normally one thing in amongst a pile of other things. Mm -hmm. But even if it's just debt, there's normally something about life and life needing to be transformed in it. And we've got our hope in Jesus, haven't we? We have. And that is what makes our services so unbelievably unique, because we have got all these people in churches all over the UK who are actually out talking to people, sharing their faith and their passion for Jesus. And they're doing it because of their passion for Jesus. And they want to help anybody and everybody, faith or no faith. Mm. But they just love doing that bit like Luke 10, going out in twos to speak to people and share that faith with them and help them, pray for them when that's the right time and the right moment to do that and just walk with them on that journey. And who is this for? I think you touched on that. This is not just for Christians, is it? This is for um, people of any faith. Who do you actually reach out to? We reach out to anybody who needs help. Who, anybody who comes to us, we reach out to them and we love doing that. We reach out to people of faith, we re all faiths, no faiths, people who are lost, people who are just going through a bit of a difficult time. We are here for anybody who needs our help and we love we love serving in that way. That's, that's absolutely brilliant, it really is. And I've heard that you're reaching out to Muslims, you're reaching out to, to Hindus, that they're all clients. Absolutely. And uh, I know that occasionally we have an atheist that watches this programme. So can I say, if you're watching today and you're in financial dire straits, do reach out to CAP because they are doing a splendid job and you don't judge people. That's the wonderful thing, just like Jesus. Um, you love everyone. <laughs> we, we don't judge because we haven't been judged yes. and, and we've been, you know, we've, we, Jesus has walked beside us no matter what we've done, so we certainly don't judge anybody. Yes. And, and I would also say that a number of um, people who work for CAP or and a lot of our befrienders are actually people who have benefited from our services. So a lot of people that are talking to people in their homes have been there a year, two years before and they're talking from their own personal experience. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely no judgment. Yeah. That's wonderful. And I think it's worth saying as well, as well as religion and uh, faith and belief, um, also income level is something actually, yeah, poverty can and mm. debt can affect people on all kinds of income levels. Mm. And particularly with our money coaching work, that really is, you don't have to be on the lowest of low incomes to benefit from that. And particularly if we've got any pastors that are watching mm. or church leaders, you can do that in your church, you can do it, and then you can recommend it to your congregation and your wider community to serve them through that as well. I just have a sense um, that there are people watching today who are desperate and this is flickering, bringing a hope in their hearts that there is some, somebody out there that can actually make a difference. I wonder in the last few minutes if you'd be prepared to just look at camera and pray for those people who are desperate, perhaps feeling suicidal, um, and, and just feeling that there is no hope whatsoever and suffering relationship breakdowns as a result and so on. Could you just uh, pray for them? Thank you, Lynn. Yes, yeah, certainly, Dale. Lord Jesus, I just really ask for your presence, your intimate presence on the lives of each and every person who is watching this program today. That, they, that you just touch their lives, you just touch their hearts. And if they're feeling isolated, alone, frightened, scared, that you just surround them like a beautiful blanket around them and show them that you love them, you care for them, and you actually get them to press the phone and call us, to go on the website, to contact us, to know you don't need to be alone. There are churches all around you who want to love you and care for you and help you out of this situation. Lord, I just pray that in the darkness, you shine your beautiful, luminous light onto lives and you give people a deep sense of hope in your name and for your glory. Amen.
and we sincerely hope that there are church leaders and pastors, priests, vicars that are watching who can really just guide people to, to get in touch with you, to get in touch with CAP and get their help and the support and the advice that they need. Um, if they go onto that website, will it show them where their local um, centre is for CAP? Will it actually give them, will it point them to the, in the right direction? Yes, and we, you can go onto the website and then you can contact us and we can put people in touch with where's the best centre for them to actually get that help. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant, yeah. In the last minute or so, can we just, could, have you got an example of somebody who's been helped recently, whose life has been turned around? Well, yeah, we've been hearing some fantastic stories through uh, money coaching just the last month or two as we've released some new materials and churches have been using that to help people really get on top of their money and get the skills. So there was one, they talked about how before that they just felt like they had no control. They felt that finances were all over the place um, as women in the, the south the southeast of England. And actually, as they started to put their budget together, as they looked at it piece by piece, as they realised what they could save, as they realised what they could change, just this sense of control, control started to come and this sense of freedom. And now actually they would say, yeah, I feel control. I feel like I know that I've got a plan and I feel like I have a way forward and I feel I have hope. And you know, that hope is just the most precious gift. And it is wonderful to see the local church serving people with a love of Jesus and giving them hope and the tools to get on top of their finances for themselves. So really there needs to be a cap center, ideally, in every town, in every village, in every uh, part of the country. Absolutely, and if, if CAP centres look really different. You know, mm. what, we have a variety of ways that churches can be involved. So it's not just one thing, it's not just one thing that fits a city or a town or a village or whatever. We've got so many things that churches can do that really do scale to different contexts. And we'd love to have that conversation if someone's watching thinking, I want my church to be involved with this in some and what way. a brilliant way of churches to be in unity and working together, whatever the denominational difference is. Absolutely. This is something that can really focus them, yeah. they can mutually support one another mm -hmm. um, and, and bring a connection that perhaps is, is practical but couldn't be brought in any other way. So there may be churches out there and you're not working together in any projects or any ideas, but you can do it. So I just want to thank you so much, Lynn. I want to thank you so much, Peter, for being with us today. Uh, you've illuminated an awful lot, so thank you for being with us. And I believe next time we are going to be looking at our relationship with money. But maybe your relationship with money is toxic. Maybe uh, you bury your head in the sand and you don't have any relationship at all. But uh, do tune in because this series is really going to help you. And God bless you. Thank you for joining us for yours today. Take care. God bless. <laughs>